Hi, and welcome to the Alien Adventures of Finn Caspian. I'm Jonathan Messenger. Jonathan, what's wrong with your voice? Yeah, I know. I have a little cold. I've been putting off recording this episode, hoping it would clear up, but no luck. Here, I'll fix your voice for you. Fix it? What does that mean? Bebop. (laughs) All right, hold on. Let me turn this dial off. Here, okay, now. The problem with my voice sounding like this is that I can't sing. And why is that a problem? Sounds like a gift to humanity. Well, (laughs) well, it's only a problem, because today is our episode inspired by the solar eclipse, which comes up on Monday, August 21st. Maybe you don't know, Bebop, but a solar eclipse is when the moon blocks the sun in our sky. The moon does that? Wow, I always thought the moon was cool. Leave the sun alone, moon. (laughs) No, no, Bebop. It's just something that happens maybe every 18 months or so. It's not intentional. It's just how the orbits around Earth work. And it's very cool that it's happening next week in the U.S., but the important thing to remember is that you can't actually look at the sun without special glasses, or it could do serious, permanent damage to your eyes. And our friends at Kid Podcasts, Ear Snacks, and Brains On both made up songs about the solar eclipse. Here, here is Ear Snacks' song. Don't stare at the sun, don't stare at the sun. Don't you dare, don't you dare, don't stare at the sun. And now here's Brains On's song. No, no, stare at the sun. So I thought we could make up our own song, but with my voice like this, I'm just not going to be able to hit the high notes that I'm famous for. Don't worry, Jonathan. I got it covered. I have a song, and it goes a little something like this. Fluffy butt, puffy butt, fluffy butt, puffy butt. Fluffy butt, puffy butt, fluffy butt, puffy butt. Wait, that's not a song, Bebop. I'm just warming up. Here, here we go. Ready? Solar eclipse, the moon is higher. Don't look at the sun or you'll catch on fire. Solar eclipse, solar eclipse. No, (laughs) Bebop, hold on. It's not that extreme. It can really hurt your eyes and like I said, do permanent damage, but you're not going to catch on fire. Just take the proper precautions and you'll be fine. Okay, I wish you had mentioned that before. Take two. Solar eclipse, it's not funny. The moon will come down and steal all your money. Solar eclipse. Wait, 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 Peepop. Stop, 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 stop. I just really don't want kids to look at the sun. So I thought I would up the stakes a little bit. Okay, try one more time and be serious this time. Okay, fine. Solar eclipse, eclipses are fun. Don't ruin your eyes by looking at the sun. Solar eclipse. Bebop's the best. Solar Eclipse. Okay, (laughs) I think you snuck something into that last part, but regardless, great song, Bebop. I think you got the message across. Now, here's our bonus episode, inspired by the upcoming Solar Eclipse, Elias and the Double Eclipse. Just push this button here, and yep, see? Anyone can fly one of these things. Elias was talking to the dogbot, RoboCloco, as the two rocketed an explorer pod out away from the famous Marlow 280 Interplanetary Exploratory Space Station. Technically, Elias was not supposed to be on this pod right now, and technically, no one had given him permission to leave the Marlow. But, technically, everyone he asked just said they didn't want to go with him. Not that he couldn't borrow a pod and go on his own to the planet below. That planet, known as XRX-350, was about to experience a double solar eclipse. That means the planet's two moons were set to align perfectly to obscure the light of its two suns. Elias had checked the bio readings and found no life on the planet 
and with two suns, it was a little hot down there, but nothing his spacesuit couldn't handle. And the solar visor on his spacesuit meant he'd be able to see the eclipse just fine. Basically, it was the perfect opportunity to check out a double solar eclipse, and he couldn't think of a reason not to go. And as it turned out, only Robococo agreed with him. Elias turned to the robot dog as the pod descended onto the planet. Hey, Cloco, why did you come with me anyway? He said. Are you kidding me? Said the dog. I'm a dog. The chance to howl at two moons? How could I pass that up? The two friends disembarked from the ship onto the scorched desert of the planet. The two suns, a pair of twin stars that hung high in the sky, had turned the ground to dust. Okay, said Elias. All we have to do now is wait. As Elias and Robococo stood together in the shallow crater, Elias missed his friends. He wished that Finn, Abigail, and Vale were here to see this incredible planet. The sand at his feet was a fine white dust. There was a range of plateaus off in the distance, and they sparkled like nothing Elias had ever seen before, the suns having long ago turned them into glass. And Elias and Cloco saw how the two moons began to slowly approach the suns, as if they were shy, working up the courage to ask the stars to dance. Elias took a picture, but he knew nothing could ever replicate the beauty and the- Oh, ow, ow, ow! Robococo bayed at the moons. Do you mind? said Elias. I was trying to reflect on the moment. Come on, said Cloco. Live a little. Howling can be just as fun as reflecting. And so the two friends howled at the two moons. But as the moons closed in on the suns, Elias and Cloco both went quiet. A dusk started to settle over the planet, and Elias checked his visor to make sure his eyes were protected. Okay, said Elias. Here we go. The two moons covered the suns. Everything went dark. It wasn't like it was suddenly nighttime. It was like someone had drawn a curtain across the suns. It reminded Elias of the light that would come in when he had built a pillow fort on the space station, the lamplight seeping in just enough to see what they were doing and to pretend they were somewhere else. And the entire planet had a mysterious shine. The plateaus in the distance glowed with the sun's energy and the dust at his feet gave off a heat he hadn't noticed before. Maybe it was the heat of the sun's trapped in the dust and now radiating out of the darkness, or maybe it was the giant mushroom aliens sprouting up from the ground and saying only one word, eat, 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 eat. Elias, of course, didn't know they were mushroom aliens, at least at first. It was so dark, all he could see were creatures with huge heads that spread out from their bodies like umbrellas. The dust and dirt of the planet seemed to not just cling to them, but be a part of them. They were huge and lumbering, and the air filled with a musty smell, like suddenly he'd been thrown into some dark dungeon. Eat, 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 eat. Uh, Elias, don't you think we should run now? Yeah, I don't really know, said Elias. Usually I can't run. Because I'm the one who gets captured first. But Robococo snapped Elias out of it, and the two soon were quickly dodging giant mushroom creatures who lunged at them, each time saying the same thing. Eat, eat. Small puffs of strange smoke shot out of their heads every time they tried to grab the friends, and Elias and Robococo had no choice but to try to make it back to the explorer pod and blast off before they were eaten. It was a minefield of mushroom aliens. Every time one came at Elias from the right, Eat. another came from the left. Eat. They charged at him from the front Eat. and chased him from the back. Eat. 
Robococo tried to get his jets going, but the thick fog from the alien spores made it impossible for him to ignite. He couldn't even see Elias in front of him, and soon the two were separated. Elias could barely see that he was closing in on the explorer pod when more mushrooms started sprouting up in front of him. Without thinking, he stepped on one that was just spawning out of the ground. Ow! Then he jumped onto one that was slightly higher. Ow! And then another. He sprung onto another. <laughs> and then he leaped for the open explorer pod door when... Eat. A giant mushroom creature caught Elias in mid-air. Robococo! Yelled Elias. It's happened! I got captured. The robot dog followed the sound of Elias' voice, and, strangely, the mushroom creatures let him pass. When he got to the explorer pod, he saw why, and he saw they were in deep trouble. A giant creature, whose mushroom head was as large as a trampoline, was holding Elias. You have disturbed us said the alien. We have little time to complete the task as our great legends of the past compel us. Oh, well, we didn't mean to interrupt you, said Elias. What does the legend say? It is a great tale. It is said that when the little sky rocks block the big sky fires, we will rise. And then what? said Robocloco. That is all. That's it? Yes! Roared the mushroom creature. It is a legend passed down from generation to generation. Geez, how'd you remember it all? said Elias. Silence! Now, we usually feast upon the glowing rocks on the horizon. The giant pointed to the plateaus in the distance. But now this big rock of yours... Looks like it could be tasty. No, said Elias. You can't eat our ship. It's not a rock, it's a... The giant bit one of the side panels of the explorer pod. Ugh! This rock tastes terrible. Yeah, sighed Elias. Because it's not a rock. Oh, you don't want me to eat this? Said the giant, smiling. Then I eat more. He reached in and grabbed the captain's chair and stuffed it in his mouth. Mm, better inside the rock. Oh man, my parents are going to kill me, said Elias. The giant began throwing the contents of the explorer pod out onto the ground. Tools, equipment, all kinds of gear, and the other mushroom creatures scarfed it all down. But then, the giant became fascinated with the various buttons and dials on the pod's console, he activated the Explorer Pod's artificial intelligence. How may I help you today? And opened and closed the pod door about a hundred times. <laughs> Elias was watching the giant and trying to figure out how he could get them out of the situation. And finally, he came up with an idea, but he knew he couldn't just tell the giant what to do. It would never listen to him. So instead, he said, Hey, whatever you do, don't eat what's in that bag over there. The giant smiled and scarfed down a bag of rations. And please, said Elias, don't hit that button over there. The giant, clearly thinking he was torturing his captive, slowly pressed the button. The pod began to hum. The giant looked at Elias, confused. You don't like the sound of your own rock? He said. No, said Elias, and I was really hoping you weren't going to press that one. Now, please, whatever you do, don't click that switch over there. Please, I beg you, don't click it. That one right there. Do not click that one. Robococo could now see what Elias was doing, but he stayed quiet. Don't click this one, said the monster. Please, said Elias. This one, right here, said the monster, waving his finger over it, teasing Elias. 
No, not that one, said Elias. Not that one right there where your finger is. The monster laughed. He flipped the switch, and then... All of the lights of the Explorer pod came on. The internal lights all illuminated, and the high-powered headlamps of the pod lit up the sky. Every spore the mushroom creatures had shot into the air lit up, and the light was blinding. The creatures all began to dig their way back into the dust. Even the giant, slinking out of the pod, began to return to the ground. Now, now we have to wait another 18 months. But the legend tells us... Yeah, yeah, we know, said Robocloco. Sky rocks block sky fires. The monsters all returned to the dirt, and Elias, standing because the monster had eaten the chair, ready the ship for launch. Elias! Elias, is that you? Are you there? Dad? We got an emergency beacon from the pod. Are you okay? What are you doing down there? I thought I told you not to go. Oh, the uh, the mushroom giant must have pressed the emergency beacon button on his way out. Mushroom giant? Said his dad. Yeah. Am I going to be mad when I hear about this? Yeah said Elias. And how long do you think I should ground you for? Well, I got a long flight back, said Elias. Let me think about it. Okay. Hey, everybody. This is Jonathan. I'm all by myself today. My editor is still working his summer hours, so he's not recording with me right now, but I have to give credit where credit is due. I had the basics for this story all mapped out, but I wasn't quite sure what the aliens were going to be. And I talked to Griffin about it, and he told me that he thought they should be mushroom aliens because mushrooms grow in the dark. So they would be the kind of aliens that came up during an eclipse. Which is a great idea. So thanks to Griffin for that. And I also want to mention that some of the story, some of the mushroom idea, came from a book called The Wonderful Flight to the Mushroom Planet by Eleanor Cameron. It's a great book. I think it's from the 1950s. I read it when I was a kid. I read it to Griffin. The mushroom aliens are a lot less confrontational in that book, (laughs) but it's great, and uh, I recommend checking that out. The other thing I wanted to mention is that we don't really dip into science so much on this podcast. We're more of a science fiction podcast, but I think it's worth noting that science and science fiction often kind of feed each other. We think of science fiction as something that is taking ideas from science and informing a story, but check this out. With the twin stars of this planet, you may remember a very famous movie called Stars War, I think. There's a guy named Luke Sky Tripper or something like that, and he lives on a planet with two suns, right? And that's science fiction. But recently, it was discovered that there may be solar systems out there with twin suns in them, which is pretty cool. And I left a link in the show notes to an article about that, if you're curious about that. I always love reading about space, and I know a lot of our listeners do too, so check out that article if you like. I also want to say thanks so much to Andrew and Polly from Ear Snacks, and Molly, Sandin, and Mark from Brains On for letting me use their songs at the beginning of the episode. If you want to check out their Eclipse episodes, which are really, really great, I left links in the show notes here. And then you can also go to app.kidslisten.org where I made a playlist of all kid episodes about the Eclipse, which is obviously coming up on Monday. So check that out as well. Okay, I know what you're waiting for. It's time to thank our chefs. Okay, if you don't hear your name, it's coming up, I promise. So thanks to Will 10 from Ellicott City, Maryland, Elias 4 and Simon 2 from Holliston, Mass, Zane 9 from South Wales, Australia, Henry 5 from Boise, Idaho, Annie and Levi from Denton, Texas, Matthew, who's 9 from Flower Mound, Texas, Tobin, who's 5 from Sydney, Australia, Faulein, Faulein, you didn't tell me where you're from. If you want to write in, I'll give you credit again in another episode. Logan, six, from Flat Rock, Michigan. Evan, from Lincolnwood, Illinois. George, seven, from Wilmette, Illinois. 
Lola5 from Stanford, Texas, Sam from New Hampshire, Merrick6, and Mayana9 from Los Gatos, California, Lucy7, and L5 from San Rafael, California, Opal from Tacoma Park, Washington, Karis from Oklahoma, Taylor4, Jake7, Ben9, and Katie11 from Connecticut, and Jacob, who is six, from Seattle. Thanks so much to all the artists for sending in their art to Bebop. And so we have a special jokes episode coming up soon, but I did want to do two jokes today because two of our chefs also sent in jokes. So here's a joke from Opal who said, what did Buzz Lightyear get at the barbers? A buzz cut. (laughs) That's pretty great. Thank you for that, Opal. And now Logan from Flat Rock, Michigan has a joke too. Hi, I'm Logan, and here's my joke. What do you call alien milk? What? The Milky Way. (laughs) (laughs) Great. Thanks, Logan. All right. Thanks to everybody who sent in their art and their jokes. And thanks for listening to this special bonus episode. I hope you enjoy the eclipse on Monday. Check out Brains On and Ear Snacks. They're great shows. And I'll see you very soon. Thanks.